Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will be discussing the results of a meta-analysis assessing the safety and efficacy of dolotegravir in HIV-positive pregnant women in sub-Saharan Africa. The current first-line antiretroviral treatment for pregnant women consists of TDF with 3TC or FTC and dolotegravir. Dolotegravir is part of the first-line recommendation as it is well tolerated in its users and multiple studies have demonstrated its ability to cause a significant and rapid reduction in the viral load. It is further favoured over drugs such as efavirenz as it has a higher barrier to drug resistance, which is an important property given the concerns regarding NNRTI drug resistance in Africa. This study aimed to analyse the results from recent trials that have studied pregnant women to compare the effects of dolotegravir treatments against the previous standard of care treatment consisting of TDF, 3TC or FTC and efavirenz. Five trials were selected for the meta-analysis, with the overall sample size being 1,074 women. Dolphin 1, Dolphin 2 and Impact 2010 enrolled women in late pregnancy, whereas the women in Advance and Namsal became pregnant whilst they were partaking on the trial. Specifically, Advance and Impact 2010 had three treatment arms, where two dolotegravir combinations, one with TAF and one with TDF, were compared against efavirenz. The study will be published as a paper in the near future, so the meta-analysis method will be outlined in detail there. Regarding the endpoints, drug efficacy was measured using the viral suppression rates in each trial. Viral suppression was defined as a viral load of less than 50 copies in all the trials except for IMPACT 2010, which defined this as less than 200. NAMSAL did not provide viral suppression results for pregnant women, so it was not included in this endpoint, and the number of mother-to-child transmission cases was also evaluated. Regarding drug safety, the number of stillbirths, neonatal deaths, small for gestational age infants and preterm births was measured, and we also looked at the number of mothers and infants experiencing one or more adverse events. With trials varying on how they defined adverse events, we extracted data on grade 3 or more adverse events and serious adverse events and treated them as equivalent for the analysis. Moving on to the results, this graph shows the proportion of pregnant women becoming virally suppressed at delivery in each trial. Overall, there was a significant difference between the two treatments as dolotegravir had 90% viral suppression rate compared to only 72% with efavirenz. In Dolphin 1, Dolphin 2 and Impact 2010, where women only had a few weeks to achieve viral suppression at delivery, it was dolotegravir that was able to cause a significantly higher proportion of viral suppression. However, in the advanced trial, many women were on the antiretroviral treatment for almost two years before their pregnancy, so this longer treatment duration allowed both dolotegravir and efavirenz to take effect, which resulted in a non-significant difference for this trial, and you can see the p-value was 0.47 for advance. Now, given that efavirenz was inferior to dolotegravir regarding viral suppression, you would expect to see significantly more mother-to-child transmission cases with efavirenz, and this was not seen. Although there was no statistically significant difference between dolotegravir and efavirenz, all five mother-to-child transmission cases occurred in the dolotegravir arm, with none on the efavirenz arm. There was no significant difference between the treatments in terms of neonatal deaths. However, there was a borderline significant difference for stillbirths, with almost double the number of stillbirths occurring in the dolotegravir arm. Looking at adverse events, there was no significant difference between dolotegravir and efavirenz for mothers experiencing one or more adverse event, but a borderline significant difference between the treatments for the infant group, with more infants experiencing this in the efavirenz arm. In terms of preterm births, there was 4% higher absolute risk of preterm births with efavirenz. Overall, 8% of mothers in the dolotegravir arm reported preterm births compared to 12% in the efavirenz arm. Regarding small for gestational age infants, there was no significant difference between the treatments. As you can see, the total percentage proportion of preterm births in the two treatment arms was very similar. As Advance and Impact 2010 had two dolotegravir-based treatment arms, TAF-FTC dolotegravir was compared against TDF-FTC dolotegravir, and there was no significant difference in the mothers or infants experiencing one or more adverse events. The trend in Impact 2010 favoured the safety of TAF-FTC dolotegravir, but the results of the advance showed the opposite trend, so overall there was no significant difference between TAF regimen and the TDF regimen regarding treatment safety. Before discussing implications, here is a graph from the advanced trial showing the weight gain trend in black female participants in each of the three treatment arms over approximately three years. Results have found that weight gain has been noticeable with dolotegravir, particularly in combination with TAF.
At 144 weeks, women on the taf dolotegravir combination gained approximately 12 kilograms. The weight gain with dolotegravir has not only been reported in the advanced trial, with the NAMSAL trial also showing more weight gain with the dolotegravir treatment. The safety profile of dolotegravir and efavirenz was similar in the results from our meta-analysis. However, they only show the short-term effects of dolotegravir and its treatment combinations. Women on these trials received treatments for a short period of time with a limited long-term follow-up. Most participants in the meta-analysis sample started treatment just before pregnancy or during it, and this criteria may not be generalizable to the HIV-positive pregnant population. In reality, majority of the women are likely to receive antiretroviral treatment for years before they become pregnant. Therefore, future assessment of the long-term safety profile of dolotegravir is required through observational studies. It is especially important considering the concerns regarding dolotegravir-associated weight gain, possibly increasing the risk of obesity-associated adverse birth outcomes in its female users. In conclusion, to summarise our findings, regarding the drug efficacy, we found that dolotegravir caused greater proportions of viral suppression over efavirenz in the pregnant women, so we were surprised to find all five mother-to-child transmission cases occurring in the dolotegravir arm, with none in the efavirenz arm. It is important to mention here that Dolphin 2 stated that in utero transmission likely explains three cases it reported, as the maternal viral load at delivery was low. Nevertheless, future trials should treat mother-to-child transmission as a primary outcome to assess our results further. Regarding the safety, there were marginal differences between dolotegravir and efavirenz, with a trend for more stillbirths with dolotegravir, but more preterm births with efavirenz, and there was no significant difference between the safety of TAF FTC and TDF FTC in combination with dolotegravir. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.